All right, we're back for another episode of the K and O Show. All right, uh, Big O and I did some research at uh, our favorite spot, Wings and Rings, yesterday, and uh, we were there. And I'm just really glad they didn't ask us to leave because. After 25,000 times of me doing that, I'm sure the waitress was ready for me to be gone. But that's what I tend to do when I watch a clown show that is known as The Seminoles. Yes, it is apparent that they suck. Um, they're not very good anywhere. Defensively, they looked better yesterday, I thought, didn't you, Big O? Yeah. Looked a little better on defense. Um what would you say your take on DJ is? Makes horrible decisions. Okay. That's definitely one. Uh, what was the other one he went to run, would you say? Oh, yeah. He's just... He's 250 pounds and scared to run. But whenever he did run, he got a first down. So he did know. run once he got a first down. And what Big O's talking about is, is a lot of the quarterbacks, when they make a decision, they go. Again, going right back to what Big O said, his decision making even on a run is awful. Like he's, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And listen, you're a million times quarterback than I'll ever be, DJ. But to be a good quarterback, you have to make decisions, and you don't make those. You didn't make him at, you didn't make him at Clemson. I don't really know how much you did at Oregon State. I didn't want you. I was, I did not want to get you. And we got you, and I thought, okay, if we can run the ball, maybe we can't. Can FSU can't run the ball? So it's a bye week. They had a week off. Florida State had a week off to prepare for Memphis. They should have been ready to go, and they laid an egg. Did they? They go. It's pretty bad. Uh, would you say it's time for a new quarterback? Yes, they have a deep quarterback room, and they just they should just get. They just need to let him go. Yeah. Just. Take the million and five dollars that they paid him and just take it as a loss. Bad investment. So the I believe there's also a change in strategy offensively because the offense looked uh, looked bad. Looked really bad. It uh, I have a saying, but I, I won't I won't use it right now. So, anyways, another team that looked bad, Big O, was also in the state of Florida. That would be the Gators. Uh, Texas A&M beat them what? 33 to 20. And it wasn't really that close, was no, it? it was not. Yeah, so Big O and I both watched uh, a little bit of that too, and we'd, we'd seen enough. Uh, are you surprised they didn't play the Lagway quarterback more? Yeah, after Graham Mertz got injured in week one, I thought, or week two, mm -hmm. I thought they were putting the five-star in, but they just didn't. And uh, they didn't yesterday, and I thought they, they would, but uh, they they stuck with Mertz, and uh, he gave them exactly what he's advertised. He's not very good either. Uh, so Florida and Florida State are both miserable. There's only one team in the state of Florida right now, uh, Miami. Uh, no offense to UCF and South Florida and all the other teams, but Miami's the best team in Florida right now. Which makes us sad because we hate Miami. But that's the way it goes. Our other game uh, me and Big O looked at was um, he and I went back and forth on how much I should bet on the uh, Notre Dame and Purdue. Because we thought, what, Purdue had a chance yeah, after, had a chance yeah. after yeah. that. So big bounce back for Notre Dame. They put up 66, I think. Is that right? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, had how many yards, Big O? Uh, 578. 578 yards against Purdue, then 360. Six, 360 was on the ground. Uh, Leonard Riley had, how about that stat, Big O? He had 112 yards throwing, and he had, what? 100 yards rushing. Yard rushing. So, pretty good day for Leonard Riley. He was on a mission. So, a big bounce back for Notre Dame. Uh, they got the... It was a big win for them because, you know, a lot of people were saying Purdue was, you know, could take them down. But uh, they handled that pretty easy. Um, another game me and Big O were watching while we were sitting there um, at Wings and Rings was the Missouri-Boston College game, and we were both pretty shocked. Do you think Big O and Missouri is as advertised? Are they a number six team in the country? Boston College is a great team, but I think Missouri is a way better team. Yep. And they're, 
Well, Missouri, um, they have some competition in the SEC. Uh, this they schedule. do have a little easier schedule, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but they do have to play. Uh, so you think they're as advertised? You think they're just that good? I wouldn't say how. Well, they're number six in the country. Do you think they're they're good enough for six? Have you seen enough? That's what I need to ask you. Have you seen enough? No. Okay. So you need to see them beat. We need to look at their schedule. I don't know what their schedule is, but we'll look at that. Uh, but Missouri did struggle a little bit yesterday at Boston College. Mm -hmm. Now, Boston College beat Florida State, but we just established how bad Florida State is. So I don't really know what, you know, Boston College. Now, Boston College was, they look good early. I mean, they jumped out on Missouri. Uh, SEC team. Um, what about the Missouri quarterback? Cook? Oh, I like him. Yep. Uh, he uh, he's a good runner when he wants and helped him yesterday, didn't it? Yeah, helped him yesterday. Yeah, he had a uh, had a couple big runs that you know really really helped him. He uh, also had another TD pass to uh, Lutheran. Is that right? Is that yes. Is that, yeah, Lutheran third, I think. Is that yes. Name? Yeah. Uh, one of the top receivers in the country. The thing that hurt Boston College yesterday was the two turnovers. That's that's what got them. Those two turnovers uh, ended up getting them 27-21. Close game, but Missouri, you know, kind of pulled out there at the end. Um, another game Big O and I watched was LSU South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, were you surprised LSU was up 17? Or excuse me, South Carolina was up 17 to nothing on LSU. Oh, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, now, did that make you feel better because UK just got beat by South Carolina? Did you feel like South Carolina may be a better team than what you thought? Yeah, South Carolina's quarterback wasn't as good as I thought. But he uh, showed out with the 70, 60 yard rushing touchdown. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah. And, uh, it was 60 or 70, I can't remember. I think his was 70. I think the uh, Rocket yeah, Sanders kid 60. was 60. But, yeah, they. Uh, LSU was in trouble, and uh, man, they just kept on battling and hanging in there. Um, and South Carolina had a chance at the end, forty-nine yard field goal. What happened, Big O? Shanked it. Just missed it, didn't he? Thought it was going. It kind of, you know, turned on him. Uh, I still. What do you think about the LSU defense? Did it still look a little shaky? Yeah. Uh, after getting thirty-three points. Giving 33 points in South Carolina. Yeah, and they uh, a couple big, really big runs, big plays too. Yeah. They had on there. Um, I think South Carolina's better than what everybody thought they were going to be, uh, for sure, yeah. especially with going into Lexington and beating UK like that. The uh, kid from LSU, that Nussmeyer kid, is, man, kid made some mistakes early, but God, he just kept hanging in there and doing what he needed to do, and he kind of put everything behind him. Um, I read an interview, and he said that, you know, he couldn't think about the interception or the fumble or anything happened. He's just got to keep moving forward, and he did, and they ended up winning. So, good win for them. Um, there wasn't a lot of great games on yesterday. There was Oregon-Oregon State, which is a rivalry, but it was a blowout. Uh, thanks a lot, Oregon State. Messed up my betting. Uh, it was a couple other games yesterday, and they just weren't, you know, still really not for sure who, you know, some of these teams are now. Texas, uh, big win yesterday. Arch Manning gets to come in because it looks like Quinn Ewers has got an ab strain. What did you think about Arch's feet, Big O, on his 60-some yard run? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saw that on ESPN. They showed it 50 times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> think ESPN's pushing for him to move in the Heisman? Yeah. Probably so. Uh, faster than his uncles, uh, Peyton and Eli, you think? Yeah, way faster. Yeah, uh, way faster. He did really good in the second half, and I can I want to see what he can do the rest of the season. Full game, yeah, five. He's responsible for five touchdowns. So I mean, two hundred and fifty some yards rushing and passing, not total, but two fifty altogether, uh, and then responsible for five touchdowns. He looked really good yesterday. Uh, we'll see what he does, I guess, down the road. Um, next, what we got is this is just a, a weird one that me and Big O like to pick. And uh, we're going with the South Alabama versus Northwest State. And Big O, that score was? 87 to 10. 87 to 10. So, um, this reminds me of some of the scores uh, back in the day when I played uh, football for uh, Caverna High School. That's uh, some of the scores we get beat by like that. Uh, pre pretty bad. We didn't, we didn't have a very good team. And it showed. 
Um, 87 to 10, I mean, that's, you're like scoring like at will, just, yeah, just 87. Score. I mean, that's crazy. So, uh, let's see, there's, let's see, 15, 30, so there's 60, there's 60 minutes, if you look at 15 minute each quarter, right? So 30, 30, that'd be a hour each. So basically, out of the 60, yep, out of the 60 minutes, they scored 87 points. That's more than a point a minute. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, now on to the of my last part, then we'll get to Big O's Kentucky recap. Uh, Campbellsville is 3-0. It's a miracle. Uh, for all my buddies that played with me at Campbellsville, they'd been so bad for so long. You know, that finally, finally, they got somebody in there that's starting, looks like it's getting it done a little bit. 3-0, and now maybe they didn't play by really good. Um, a couple weeks ago, I told you about the Pikeville game. Great game. They, uh, you know, it was a back-and-forth battle, and they're 3-0, and and I think they're sitting second right now in the Mid-South Conference, uh, which is NAIA, but that's Okay. Seville is 3-0, and and I'm really glad they're actually winning again. I might actually even go to a game, Big O. You might have to go over and, you know, show you my old stomping ground. Uh, that's it. Big O is coming at you hard and heavy. No notes, by the way. This is all just impromptu stuff he's using on me. Because I asked him, I said, hey, man, where's, where's like, you know, I got two and three pages of notes over here. He goes, I got this. So... Take it away, my friend. All right. Uh, I was really surprised, to say the least. <laughs> um, yeah, what did you What did you think the score was going to be after the South Carolina loss and you texting your mother, hurry up, basketball season? So <laughs> what did you think the score was going to be when you first saw it? 50, like, 53 to 14. 53 to 14 was Big O's prediction. Didn't want to watch the game. Uh, was was very adamant about if he didn't see the game, he'd be okay. So, after watching the first half and seeing the defense, what would you think there? Oh, um, the defense looked really good. thought they did better than the last week at South well, Carolina. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the one thing, Georgia had two fumbles, mm -hmm. and Kentucky was – could have picked it up. I could have picked it up, but Kentucky just couldn't. I don't know how. But Didn't get to it. No. Uh, yeah, you got to play on a team like that. You've got to capitalize on those kind of mistakes, don't you? Yeah. You have to like when they're that good. Uh, well, up front, defensive line uh, play look good for you? Yeah. Happy with really that? Good. Mm -hmm. What about your boy Vandegrift? Did he play better for you? Oh, Was yeah. he? Did he make you happier? Yeah, he did uh, way better than – Last week. The three sacks and three completion yeah. stack? Yeah. yeah. Say so. And he had around 50 yards rushing. Uh, and on the first drive, he had 20 yards uh, out of nowhere. Um, he did way better than I thought. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you thought 53 to 14? I guess so. So, um, now, here's... Here's going to be an iffy question, and people are going to be asking all week long. And I'm sure I'll get into it with a few of my uh, clients about this this week, but what did you think three minutes to go, fourth and two, and he decides to punt at that point? What did you think? It's kind of cowardly, you know. Mm. Being down one point, three minutes left, and you punt it. Which really... So I will. I'll play the devil's advocate of coaching here, and he was probably thinking, "I've got the timeouts. We have the extra timeout now because you have the two minute warning." So he was going to try to pin them deep, and then get the ball back, and then hopefully maybe with about a minute forty five left or something like that. Uh, that's what he was thinking that, you know, would happen and they could, you know, maybe drive down and get a field goal. My point is why not go for it right there with, you know, you're across the 50, you're in their territory, and 
you're doing really well. Like, you know, you're moving the ball down the field. You got them on the ropes a little bit. So, bad call, good call. What do you think, Big O? Bad call. Bad call? You thought he was a little bit of cowardice there of not doing that. Mm. I think he was just scared of Georgia's defense, even though we ran the ball on them, like, really good. Yeah. Uh, now, what would have happened right there if you hadn't have got that? That's going to give them the ball right there around the 50. And, you know, with three minutes to go, I guess his thought was, I don't want to give them a chance to get down here and score or hit another field goal or something else. Because at that point, they were up by one. So all you needed from Kentucky was a long field goal attempt yeah. or any kind of field goal attempt, really, to, to win the game. Now, if they drove down and they got – a field goal, then it makes it a four-point game, and now Kentucky's got to score a touchdown, which would have made it much harder. So that's – I'm just saying that's probably what he was thinking. But you're thinking if you're coaching the U.K. Wildcats last night with three minutes to go, what do you do? Fourth and two. What's your play call even better? Oh. Ooh. I would go for it. I'd just run straight up the middle like we did. Just stopped. straight up the middle, nothing they nothing fancy. They couldn't stop it, so why not? not Big O with a, I mean, just a pair of cojones on him. <laughs> doesn't even care. We're going for it. Not really sure how long you're going to be in coaching, but let me tell you, I like your style. Go on and get fired and make you $26 million like Coach Napier's about ready to do. <laughs> uh, best job on the planet is a fired Football coach, basketball coach that's, you know, got a couple years left on his contract for, you know, just a 26 mil. No, nothing big. Um, do you think Stoops will be back next year? Nope. <laughs> Called it right here. Big O said this will be Stoops last year. Um, do you think he has hampered the offense the, at the time he's been here, his tenure as head coach? Has he held the offense back? Yes. Yes. It's one of the audience members. <laughs> Big O said yes also. Uh, so, do you think last night, if they would have beaten Georgia, what is the expectation then from, from UK football? If they beat Georgia last yep. night. What would be the expectations? Well, now they still got to play Texas. They still got to play Texas, Louisville. They still got to play Louisville. They still got to play Tennessee, who looks like a juggernaut right now. Deep, and it's not just their offense. Tennessee looks really good on both sides of the ball. Uh, Big O and I haven't really talked about Tennessee much because they haven't really played anybody that's kind of you know worth mentioning. Uh, you know, they look great against you know overmatched teams, but we don't know really what's going to happen. So if they would have beaten Georgia last night, and they win a few more. They could have – well, they're still going to play Ole Miss, too. So, oh Ole Miss, Tennessee, Texas at, are at, still, on the, still on there. All of those are at, at their home. Right. So, if they could have beat Georgia last night, they would have been expected to at least beat Ole Miss. Yeah. Okay? And beat Tennessee because Georgia's ranked higher than all of them. You know, this morning, I don't know, I haven't looked at the rankings, but I bet Texas will probably move to the top just because Georgia didn't play that. Now, if you remember early in the week, I did say this. Kirby Smart usually doesn't uh, – I don't know if he – I don't really know what the word is. He doesn't play his normal style against Stoops. He's, he doesn't run up the score. He's not someone that's just trying to, you know, score 100 points on, on UK, which – I mean, you're not. UK's got a good team. Uh, they just had a bad week. South Carolina, they got some stuff. Looks like they got some stuff fixed to go. I mean, they looked like a different team, I thought, from last week to this week. Yeah. Especially defensively, they look good. Offensively, Offensive they look way better, way better, I thought, too. So, Big O says should have went for it on fourth and two. Three minutes to go. I'm not saying I disagree with him. Just our take on it. Um... I think that's it. I think that's all we got for you. Uh, hope you tune in for our next week's episode. Uh, we haven't even looked at the schedule next week. I don't even know who's playing. But uh, every week's been a, been a fun week, unless you're a Florida State fan.
see ya.